Flyway Mechanic here. Today we're going to be re replacing exhaust manifolds and uh, manifold gaskets on this Chevy 5.3 liter and also applies to 6.0 liters. We're going to be putting uh, new gaskets, new manifold, we got new uh, hardware and new studs for the front pipe. Those are going to go right in down here. Because a lot of times those are going to break when you go to take them out depending on uh, what kind of rust belt you're in. Uh, we got a new donut gasket here for the passenger side and this is going to be the gasket for the driver's side. Also we got a couple broken exhaust um, bolts on this one that broke off inside the cylinder head. I'll be showing you guys how to extract those. Um, there's several different methods you can use uh, and I will show you that later on in the video. Alright, and here's all the parts that we're going to be replacing. we got both manifolds, uh, driver's side manifold and passenger side manifold with all the gaskets and all the hardware. Um, definitely, you're going to want to get all this stuff in advance because a lot of these uh, exhaust parts are rusted and they break and it's always, always a good idea to replace them. I'll leave a link in the video description below where you can get all this stuff also. We're going to start by pulling out the inner fenders on this and I'm going to spray down all the bolts with some uh, penetrating oil. Uh, to get the inner fenders out, you're just going to need a 10 millimeter or a 7 millimeter. Uh, this pick to get the plastic clipped out, and a 13 millimeter to get the uh, the actual manifold bolts out themselves. But as you can see, I already got the uh, inner fenders out here. Um, these are all our fasteners. Um, those are the 7 millimeter fasteners. There's going to be a couple Phillips, a 10 millimeter fastener, and uh, then we got our plastic fasteners right here. Yeah, by getting these inner fenders out, it gives us a lot more space to get into these exhaust manifolds. There's going to be a couple uh, push pins and stuff too that you're going to want to get out. We're going to have to pull these plug wires off as well to get those out of our way. And you can, as you can see right there, that's one of our broken studs that we're going to have to um, get out of the cylinder head. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, and these are the push pins here that go into that plastic inner fender. So you're just going to have to push those out. And uh, once you get the inner fender back in, you're going to want to reinstall those. It just keeps the wires tidy and uh, keeps them from chafing and keeps it reliable. But as you can see, we got the passenger side inner fender all pulled out too. This one's a lot more accessible. This side's fairly easy to do. But as you can see right there, this is our other broken stud that we're going to have to uh, remove from the cylinder head on the passenger side. First uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to take these front pipe bolts out. I went ahead and sprayed them all down with penetrating oil and let them soak for a little bit just to uh, get us, give us a better chance of these things coming out with any problems. I got a good feeling we're still going to have to use some heat on this one though. Alright, yeah, so I'm just going to try and zip these out with my impact gun here and uh, see if they're going to come free. Alright, well there was a few I was unable to get, but we're going to go ahead and take our fire wrench here and um, I'm not going to cut them off, I'm just going to heat them up just to the point where uh, you know they start to get red and usually that's enough to loosen them or expand them enough to where they'll be free and relatively easy to remove in most cases. And if you don't have a if you don't have a torch, which a lot of uh, DIYers don't, you really don't have to get these off in one piece because providing you have the new um, studs and nuts to install in here, uh, you can just break these things off and it's really not not a big deal. So, But in this case, I figured I'd just heat them up and try and get them off in one piece, make this thing go a little smoother. Sorry for the shaky camera, we are on the passenger side here and I was able to get the two of them off and I got this one left that I'm just going in through the inner fender with. I'm going to heat this one up and uh, just wrench it out by hand. I could just cut it off but it's just a little uh, tidier 
and I'll get metal, hot metal dropping on the floor and causing a fire hazard. So we're just going to heat it up and um, try and get this off with some hand wrenches here. Sorry about the shaky camera. I'm doing this all uh, <laughs> doing this all one-handed. I'm actually holding the camera while I do this, so we'll see. We'll see how it comes out here. But yeah, a little trick. I'm just gonna throw another wrench on there. Let's get a little extra leverage. And there we go. That one's broke free. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and zip the rest of these 13 millimeter bolts out with an impact gun. And also there's an oil dipstick on the passenger side that you're going to have to remove. Um, if you've got an older truck, it's probably a good idea to order a new dipstick tube because it's not very often those come out in one piece. Um, fortunately, on this one, I was lucky enough that this dipstick did come out without any problems. Alright, so we got the passenger side one out here and this is the bolt. And we're going to use a stud extractor. I'll leave a link in the video description below. Um, now if this bolt was completely flush to the head, what I would do is weld a nut on the head of that and get it out. I've had very good success with doing that. Um, if I had to do it in this video, I was going to show you guys, but fortunately enough, it was sticking out enough to where I was able to use this uh, stud extractor, and it worked, it worked great. Um, we'll have to see when we get the driver's side off whether or not we're going to have to use a welder or not, but uh, so far... On the passenger side, this stud extractor seems to be working great. Alright, so this one's actually coming out pretty easy, so, and they don't always come out this easy, let me just forewarn you, but uh, we seem to be having pretty good luck here. Now, if you got enough, enough of a stud sticking out, these are a great little tool, and like I said, I'll leave, I'll leave a link to this in the video description below as well. For the tool, that is. Yeah, so you know I can just spin this one out the rest of the way by hand. So these ones weren't really in there uh, that bad. It just seems like over age. The expansion and contraction of the heat on the manifold just breaks the heads off these uh, studs on these Chevy manifolds. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and uh, go up to the other side and excess the damage on this broken stud right here. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, zip the rest of these 13 millimeter bolts out on this side. Pull this manifold out of the way and see. It looks like we probably still got a little bit of stud left there to bite on on this broken stud on the driver's side. So we should be able to extract that uh, broken stud pretty easy. Now on the driver's side manifold, you're actually going to have to pull this one up through the top. Whereas the passenger side comes out pretty easy. I had to pull the spark plug wires completely out of the way in order to do this. And it is a little bit tricky, but it does fit. So.
All right, so we got that uh, manifold all out of the way. Now I'm just gonna go in here with um, my plastic uh, whiz wheel adapter here, and we're just gonna clean up this aluminum. So when we put the new gaskets on, we know we have a nice clean surface. I don't like using the more abrasive disc only because you don't want any of that stuff getting into the motor. So these are uh, plastic ends for the whiz wheel are much more forgiving and you're not you know you're not digging into the aluminum heads a whole lot so but you're still getting off all the stuff you need to and then we're left with this little bit of stud sticking out and I'm gonna go ahead and use the same method I used on the driver side because that seemed to work pretty good now I will leave a link in the video description below on how to get these bolts out with a welder when I do a video on that which I will be doing soon um, I haven't yet but be sure to subscribe and uh, to my channel and I'll have plenty more neat little tricks like that. But the welding trick works really well. I also have a number of different extractor tools that work good. But if you have a little bit of studs still sticking out, these uh, stud extractors are definitely the best method for uh, getting them out if you can. And they, usually on these Chevy um, exhaust manifolds, when they break off, they usually do leave a, bit, a little bit of a stud left. So in most cases they're relatively easy to get out but definitely not all cases I've had many occurrences where they've been broke off inside the head even set back an eighth of an inch some in some cases and uh, even then you're still able to actually weld a nut on the end of it believe it or not and get them out I've had very good success with it but um, usually you do need a high amperage welder so there we go we got uh, we got our last broken set out here and we can go ahead and uh, start reassembling this thing. There's a better look at the inside of that tool. It's just got a couple jaws in there that clamp down on any uh, broken stub that's left. Yeah, another little trick I like to use is um, I just spray a little adhesive, spray adhesive on these gaskets that came with my manifolds. Um, yeah, and then I just stick them, stick them right to the manifold. That way you don't have to worry about it moving around. And this 3M adhesive works great. I'll also leave a link to that too in the video description. But uh, yeah, just place it on there. Those suckers usually stay right in place, nice and nice and tight. And you're not trying to shuffle around with a bunch of hands, and you know you know you got your gasket in the right place. All right, as you can see here, we got the driver side all uh, installed. I got all the bolts torqued down. Now, when you do this, you're going to want to make sure you just um, start all your bolts by hand, because a lot of times you're going to have to move this thing around a little bit. And this bolt all the way to the rear. You're actually going to have to use a wrench to get at, or to tighten, so uh, that was a little tricky to get to. I did have to do it by hand with a wrench. All right, on the driver's side, we're going to go, or sorry, this is the passenger side, is where we're going to install this uh, donut gasket. It just clips right into the manifold like that, and it stays in nice and secure. You're just going to want to make sure it fits good, and it's nice and even all the way around before you install it. There you see we got this one all installed, all torqued down, all our plug wires reinstalled. Now we just need to um, finish up by bringing this front pipe up and installing those bolts. But that about does it for this video. Um, I hope it was helpful for you guys. If so, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Flat Rate Mechanic. Well, that about does it for this um Chevy 5.3 liter exhaust manifold uh, repair and broken stud repair.